Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the regular show Iceberg Part 2. Now, if you haven't originally seen the Part 1 of the regular show series, uh, please check it out. It is actually on my channel, and it's a super entertaining video. I highly recommend you to watch that one first. But if not, feel free to watch this one first. So this is going to be a continuation of Part 1. Without further ado, let's get it started. Wish right now. This refers to that one meme where Mordecai was singing airplanes with Twilight Sparkle from My Little Pony. And man, this was an interesting time in uh, 2021 where this took place. Here's a little clip. We've been sent that airplanes in the night sky or like shooting stars. Rigby's deaths. So Rigby faced death several times and actually died four of those times but he was swiftly resurrected. Here's all the times he died. He was killed by Skips in an arm wrestling match. He was killed by Snowballs, the ice monster. He also was killed when Mordecai pushed him into the space-time continuum, and he fell into a coma in Excellent as well. And there's plenty of speculation and theories of why he dies in the show. Maybe it's because he's such a iconic character to the show that it's giving the, the viewers just a shock effect. But overall, it's pretty funny how, fu how many times it happens. Donald Trump. This refers to Richard Buckner, who is a main antagonist of the Thanksgiving special. And he is described as the richest man in the world. And he's basically regular show's version of Donald Trump. And aside from being a rich businessman, Richard had one main purpose in life. And it was to have Thanksgiving all by himself. Huge Head. Huge Head is a secondary antagonist from the episode Really Real Wrestling and the main antagonist of the episode Men in Uniform. He is a RRW wrestler who may be a lollipop like Pops due to his bodily shape and his big head, though as of right now it cannot be proven. And it is implied that he might have gone insane during his time plotting revenge as even when the park workers notice him, he didn't seem to care. And apparently this is his gravesite. Spark Initiative. The Spark Initiative was a program created by Dr. Dome and later directed by Dr. Ruben Langer. Spark may have been a combination between space and park, as said by Benson, but it could also be a code name or possibly even an acronym. The goal of Spark Initiative was to bring different parks around the world into space, parking them in massive stations like the Space Tree and the Space Bush. It's essentially a secret organization of the parks, and it also had correlations with the Dome experiment. Mr. Ross. Mr. Ross is the main antagonist in Regular Show, the movie. He was an insane, evil volleyball coach slash science teacher who wanted revenge on Rigby for ruining his championship volleyball game. And he also got sent to prison by accidentally exposing his illegal plutonium smuggling. And so he became obsessed with revenge, so much so that he wanted to invent a time machine to travel back in time to prevent his, volley teams, his volleyball team's loss. And so, years later, he made Mordecai turn on Rigby to help him defeat the park rangers. However, as soon as the time NATO was created, he betrayed Mordecai by threatening to kill his present self, showing that he never really cared about his failure to go to college. So, after his defeat, Mordecai and Rigby told their past selves to apologize to Mr. Ross, which made him a happy man in the end. The Dome So the park actually has a dome placed over the top of it, to create a contained ecosystem. And the park workers are actually trapped in the dome as a result of Benson getting the date wrong. However, it is revealed that the date was changed by Mr. Mailer. And this is all part of the dome experiment in which it, Benson announced in a normal announcement of a park meeting that the park is going to be sealed in a dome every month in order to create a contained ecosystem. Excellent Night. So the Excellent Night is a knight that appears at the end of the eating competition in the episode Excellent, in which he shows several prizes where you must choose the correct prize or you would die. The way of dying is unknown, however. If a person chooses correctly, he replaces the trucker hat with an identical one from a closet full of said hats. And the knight only appears after someone finishes the Excellent Challenge. And he declared Mordecai the winner. The Capicola gang were a group of living animatronics 
that were playing as a band in the fun fun zone and they debuted as antagonists in the season three episode fuzzy dice so the three members of the gang were dominic amelia and louis and at one point of time it said the gang knocked over bay city jewelers and made off with a stash of uncut diamonds they kept the stolen diamonds in a pair of fuzzy dice Knowing the police would come after them, they went down to the Fun Fun Zone, storing the fuzzy dice in the prize walls. Ten years later, on the night that the Statue of Limitations was supposed to run out, Mordecai, Rigby, Muscle Man, High Five Ghost, Skips, and Benson won a million tickets to claim the fuzzy dice. The gang tried to make off with them, but the group got pursued all the way to the docks, where the FBI showed up shortly after and shot them with guns, and it was a crazy amount of firepower. This scene is one of the greatest scenes in regular show history. Bumpers. This just refers to the amount of bumpers that regular show has had over its long history on Cartoon Network. Here's just a couple of them for nostalgia's sake. And one more thing. Dude, these bumpers were amazing. Looking back at them now, it's just like, man, just watch it. Anti-Pops is one of the main antagonists of regular show. He's also Pop's brother. And for reasons that haven't been revealed, he wants his brother dead. And Mordecai and Rigby have given him the nickname Anti-Pops after they first saw him. So, Pops and his story go like this. According to the Chronicles of Lollyland, Anti-Pops was born in order to balance with his brother Pops, which is considered the most powerful being in Lollyland. Due to their personality difference and power, both beings fight each other with Pops wanting to save the universe and Anti-Pops wanting to destroy the universe. However, the fight usually ends in a stalemate where they both punch each other and that the universe will reset once more. It is unknown how many times this has happened, but we can assume it's a lot with the amount of tattoos and memory with the last battle. And he is the complete opposite of Pops. Anti-Pops is a rude, tyrannical, homicidal, ruthless, destructive, just overall bad person. And he was defeated from Pop's hug and died from burning in the sun, along with Pop's. Thus, now he is in the afterlife. Post-it notes. I believe this just refers to JD and Quintel actually using post-it notes to write the storyboard for a regular show. You can see various photos of them on the internet. And it's really cool to see that they bring it all together in its animated form. High Five Ghost does nothing. So, High Five Ghost basically has one of the most useless amounts of use in the entirety of regular show not only that he's had the least amount of character development throughout the entire show and for the most part he was basically a prop for muscle man he basically exists to high five him and thinking back i mean he hasn't really had like a crazy amount of things that he actually provided to the show itself but Nevertheless, he was a cool and interesting character. It's just sad that they didn't really do anything with him much. Party Pete. So Party Pete runs a underground party cloning organization. And his clones essentially run a parting surface service that charges $50 an hour, which includes a promotional ice sculpture of him posing. He also makes a surprise appearance in Exit 9B. Carter and Briggs. Carter and Briggs are main protagonists in the TV show Carter and Briggs. So Carter and Briggs are first seen when they announce that they will be hosting a contest where the person that can do the most donuts in a row will make a cameo appearance in their next episode. And so the contest was eventually run by Mordecai and Rigby after they were victorious over characters posing as Carter and Briggs. The Real Thomas. So, The Real Thomas is the eighth episode in season six, in which, thinking he is up to something, Rigby sets out to find out who the real Thomas is. So, Thomas is actually revealed to be a Russian spy, and his name is revealed to be Nikolai, which is the Russian version of the name Nicholas. And it's funny because originally no one paid attention to Thomas, which basically allowed him to enact his evil plan. Low Five Ghost. So basically, he has the same appearance of High Five Ghost, but with facial hair. And he wears teal sunglasses and has two hands out more than High Five Ghost does. And he appears actually in a couple of episodes too. However, I have only slight memory about this character. Party Horse. So Party Horse is a large white alien stallion 
with a lecture and irresponsible personality and loves to goof off at times and party. And that's a trait that's shared by all the youths of the species. And he first appears in an egg when he crashes to the earth in an egg-shaped spaceship. And Mordecai and Rigby discover him unconscious and take him to the house where he wakes up and explains he is from a planet from where everyone parties. And he basically had to pass this test. And if he doesn't, Principal Party Horse comes to the earth and blows it up. So Mordecai manages to give the principal a proposition to let the party horse have one hour to study. And so after studying, the principal gave Party Horse one hour to complete the test and knowing that he'll fail, makes a video of him to show Party Horses on their home planet. And long story short, he basically did not destroy the earth. However, he just revealed that the entire test, he drew a drawing of Principal Party Horse that had the title Jerk Horse. So pretty funny character all around. And unfortunately, another subtle stop because that is part two of the regular show Iceberg. The last and final episode will be out next week. Let me know what you guys thought of the series. Let me know what shows you guys would want next on an Iceberg. Had a ton of fun creating this entire series. And I can't believe that we're already almost at part three. You know, it feels like just yesterday that I made this regular show Iceberg. So I really hope that you guys enjoy it. And so, like I said, part three will be coming out next week. So look forward to that. And if you guys liked the video, please like. And if you enjoyed, comment down below what your favorite thing about regular show is. Like, I'm trying to hear some of your guys' responses, some of your feedback. So with that being said, I will see you guys next time. Take it easy.